Let's go real fast. Now we're good. All right, we're back on the record. Back on the record. Okay, council members. Um, apparently, nobody was available from planning to be here tonight. So we have uh, two items, three. Folks, we have two items, 3A and 3B, that have to do with amendments to uh, redevelopment plans. Um, and uh, we're going to see if we can have, we'll have them there on Wednesday night yeah. um, to answer questions uh, related to these, uh, these two items. Um, I guess the, the developers regarding 3B and the changes that are there are here tonight. Yeah. Um, normally planning answers these questions, but mm -hmm. if folks wanted to speak to them, we can certainly open it up to them. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, I prefer to wait until planning. planning gets here. So. Yeah. Well, Wednesday night? Plus the 3B is the board of council. It's first reading. And it's first reading. So the next meeting, if we pass the calendar, is January 9th. There's, uh, I know there's holidays in between, but there's ample time to uh, get questions answered in between now and then. Yep, is that okay? Keep going, G. G is an ordinance supplementing Chapter 304, Taxation, Article 6, Long-Term and Five-Year Tax Exemption. <coughs> Quietly, please. Affordable Housing Trust Fund, the mandated all recipients of long-term and five-year tax exemptions enter into a project employment and contracting agreements, the PICAs. H is an ordinance amending Chapter 254, Property Maintenance. Article 9, vacant property, section 254, 21.3, general requirements for vacant buildings and lots, suspending the requirement for registration of vacant buildings and lots. And before we move on, I is similar. It's uh, what are we so doing here, Melando? So H is essentially suspending, so all of you have gotten the emails or contacts from folks about these vacant lot issues. So we passed that ordinance back in, what was it, July, I think? Mm -hmm. um, somewhere around there. So apparently something with regard to the definitions of vacant lots and what's classified as vacant lots. So we all know that there are people out there who are getting hit with fines and um, tickets for not registering. Um, some of them, as uh, has been described in, as was intended, possibly, vacant lots that are high source in the community and so forth um, that weren't registered or not being maintained. Um, but then there's a lot of other ones out there, as you know, that uh, are the parking lot. For example, my church, the parking lot that's been the parking lot for decades upon decades, is apparently registered as a vacant lot. And so there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing. Um, and, but they got hit with a big fine. And you can line up a whole bunch of folks. You've all talked to them. And so this ordinance essentially just suspends it um, until we work out the kinks and figure out how to um, amend the ordinances. And then 3I is Michael Yun's um, uh, ordinance introducing that to, to try to amend it um, to fix the, the challenges there. Um, I will be frank with you, I haven't really read Councilman Yun's and he can explain what it is. And my feeling is just, we got it wrong the first time, take some time to dot the I's and cross the T's and make sure it gets done right and uh, suspend it for now. Um, in the short term, it doesn't clear up what's in the past. So if people have fines in the past, talk to the law department, mm -hmm. as well as the municipal prosecutor about that and so forth. And um, apparently we, there's no, I asked if it was possible to do an ordinance or some sort of resolution to nullify all past fines against that ordinance since the time we effectuated the <coughs> ordinance. Um, we're not able to do that legally, um, but um, uh, the municipal prosecutor assured that uh, if folks send it to him, and many of you, have sent them things via email and through the link or something, an internet link. Um, they can do that and he will expedite things to make sure that um, that they don't have to be burdened unnecessarily by if they were ticketed in this manner because of an ordinance that was our fault, essentially. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I think um, what you stated was correct. And uh, I think, you know, obviously anything that is now a, an actual violation will be handled by the prosecutor. So are there any questions about enforcement, um, imposition of fines or penalties, that would be the that would be the office to speak to. So a person gets 
the notice to be in court. They still have to go to court? Yeah. Right now they're suspended, but so I've also spoken to the, the, the chief judge and he advised me that I haven't had that conversation, but um, to speak with DPW um, and whoever's issuing tickets and to be able to talk to Jake and kind of have folks kind of coordinate among themselves and the, the courts to figure out how to do this uh, fairly quickly so that folks who already have court dates scheduled that we can address them easily and quickly so that they're not, uh, like you said, if you go through that link or you, they connect with Jake Hutnut, the municipal prosecutor, he's assured that, you know, he's still going to review each case individually, but um, mm -hmm. he'll do things on an expedited basis to try to get folks who have been wrongfully it's my, understanding, it's my understanding the prosecutor's office in general is looking to eliminate unnecessary court appearances to the extent possible. It's better for everybody that way. And so I think if the if people have received a ticket for this offense, and they should affirmatively reach out to the prosecutor. So, so now, so, you know, we have a two ordinances. One yeah. is a 3HPI. So, so this is what happened. We passed one, 2000, uh, what was it, we, have, we passed this one? In July. <coughs> July, last year? No, this year. 2014. No, this year, Michael, we passed these changes. Just That's just why it's, it's taking effect now. We, 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 no, 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 we, we, pass, we passed the, passed the, the fee increases. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. We passed the 2015, something like that, and the, we, the, 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 when you pass the 2015, the city council and this administration had a good intention to try to encourage the people who hold it that they cannot, right. careless, right. don't care, just keep the whole lot, and especially URA is a lot, you know, URA too, to try to wait for the price to go up so they can make a quick and big box. So we come out with some idea and administration, this council, we're gonna have to eliminate that problem. So they rush to creative ordinance of vacant lot. Do we have to, every vacant lot owner have to register and there are fees involved, 500,000, whatever is it, I cannot even know those numbers. So was it passed by city council, nine to zero, because every city council members agree with that is a good way to limit it that they cannot isolate a lot in Georgia City. So after do that, actually business owner knows very well, we have no manpower to enforce first time. So now down the road, this year, one of our very aggressive inspectors, I can say they're very aggressive inspector, and he tried to bring all those things at the table, then what we realized this council have some problem. Around 200 bacon nut, 70 bacon nut is issue. Because some people has the backyard, the front yard, but some people has a side here used for swimming pool, a playground for children, but those people in textbook as a vacant lot. My client, we know the issue. So we, we know the issue. Yeah, we, we were aware. So of we, when I was a bachelor, that's why. So we actually tried to crack that problem, but simply amend, uh, uh, change the definition of vacant lot. That's what it is. So if we change the definition of vacant lot, if we own the lot, side yard and well maintained as a part of you the uh, next of your lot as a part of your lot i mean the, the residential area then we weigh that as a bacon that is a registration fee mm -hmm. this one actually cracked to most of the problem that we have but meantime and also we can continue to achieve the goal to make sure that they cannot almost live a lot many years without and in maintenance and so on, so to try to make a big box. Actually, those things house problems. So, up to counts people, if we suspend, the people who paid already the registration fee and so on, so make them look like a jerk. You know? Absolutely. And like, look, I, think, I think they should be refunded their money. That's yeah. what I think too. And also, <laughs> people obey the law looks like not smart way to obey the law since counts group there. So there are two choices. We're going to be suspend whole things, but still we have got ticket, they have to go court. But if we amend, amend, then we're going to eliminate the problem and we can achieve that our initial goal
to try to limit it and encourage the property, I mean, the lot owners to develop to that area. So, uh, so uh, Michael, uh, look, I, 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 I want to achieve the goal too. Let me just yeah. say this. I'm not going to fight, argue about no, it. No, I'm not going to fight. I'm just saying, I, I want to achieve the goal too. I, I, I'm sure you've done a lot of work on this and everything. Yeah. I would just like to dot the I's and cross the T's and make sure that whatever change is being made, that we're not exacerbating the problem or, or looking at unforeseen, con un unexpected things that still would pop up as a, as a result because of um, people still, I mean, it, just, it just suspends the enforcement. Let's take a look at the, your, your, your ordinance and um, well, have you discussed this with, who, who has been involved in preparing this, this ordinance with you? The first thing, so we speak with the law department, yeah. And the first thing, so, you know what actually you believe or not? Now, who's, who's involved? Just, involved? Just who's involved? With the ordinance. Ordinance? Me and our aid and the law department. Yeah, so I would say you probably need to talk to um, DPW oh, and the no, ticketing we, department. We spoke with them already. You probably need to speak to the Division of Housing Preservation and Diana Anderson, mm -hmm. yeah. right? I mean, there's a bunch of different parties there, that, that and <clears throat> the municipal prosecutor and others, and the, the, the chief judge and others, to just make sure that we, again, got, we're, we're covering all our bases on this stuff before before we hurt people again, I'd like to, you know, to be hurt. Want to do that. So, like, I think everybody has the same goal, right? Yeah. Yes, you, yes. you have two different ways of achieving that goal. Right. So, like, last week I spoke with uh, Nick, and he mentioned that under, I guess, certain circumstances, there is a way that double lots can be consolidated administratively by housing code enforcement. So, can we learn more about that option, and then I guess decide what's the best route for us to take here? No, I spoke that, that's my point, suspending it so we figure these I, things out. Yeah, I, I, I also have a slightly different but a very unique situation where somebody owns a lot that's basically like 100 square feet, so it's really not developable, but mm -hmm. it's not adjacent to them. So we'd have to find some way to include that type of a person because you literally right. can't build anything on it. Rich, go ahead. Why don't you call the prosecutor up and just tell him to avoid all these damn summits? We did, I did. We, we sat down, we had a conversation. Is he going to do it? No. Well, <laughs> it's not. What's his written is hard. James, what were you so, saying, James? James? So, no. did you finish what you were saying? Yeah, I did. So, the, the, I spoke with the planning department, and I spoke with housing code. Their recommendation, actually, if we amend, we're going to limit the problem. Which way we create the bill, they always have an issue. But if we change amend like this, yeah. most cases, we're going to limit the problem. Is that right? Yeah, you're a lawyer. I, I would imagine, yes. Yeah. So, what do we tell people? No, no, no. So, no, people get ticket, already ticket issued based on old, uh, our <coughs> law, city ordinance. So, they have to go court, location of body. So, then what's going to happen when they go to court? We can't really say it's up to the judge. No, the municipal prosecutor will use uh, prosecutorial discretion. I have a woman in the back of me that lives in Virginia, different. and she has the lot next to a house. Her son's living in it. She's not coming up here to go to court. I agree. So yeah, that's right. why I feel like yeah, that's why she should contact and the prosecutor. It's also, as far as I'm concerned, you're telling a person they, you're going to get, uh, tax them additional to have an empty lot. That's wrong. This is America. It's not a goddamn communist country. No, no. The, I, I understand. But if we see this citywide, they have a lot, because we have a, people purchase a lot to do some improvement. Mm -hmm. Some people purchase a lot, just wait for the price to go up as a spectacular to get their, some money out. See, those kind of lot, they carelessly maintenance, you know what I'm saying? Issue them summonses, Mike, come on. Not only summons issues, there, summons issues there. We try to encourage them, and the which way, not directly, indirectly, we so, so push them to come up with some plan. God, my, my ask of you is, let's just suspend, suspend this, Take it on second reading on January 2nd as part of our um, special meeting, whatever that we want to call it, whatever that meeting is called, so we can get this into effect as soon as possible and suspend enforcement. Although I th I'm hoping that it's already been suspended uh, yeah, executively, yeah. on an executive yeah, basis. Yeah, we'll move in that direction, yes. Um, so, 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 I mean, crack the problem because. But then let's work on it. If, if you want to be head the committee, why don't we just have a committee? You can head it up. Anyone else who wants to be on it? can work through the whole thing, you've already got something in place to start with, and then everyone else can bring their scenarios to you and mm -hmm. anyone else with the law department and others to do it through. And maybe, I don't know if you're willing, or, but maybe we can add a, you know, the, the suspension only lasts 60 days or something to kind of force us to 
you know, get a draft and get it done. Yeah, that's true. Something yeah, that's like, true. So there's something like that. That's true. So then, and then yeah. we have a committee Forces working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Go to the Senate. Try to make it better. Mm -hmm. And make sure that not people's purchase empty lot sit on, don't do nothing. That's you why know? when you have a committee, you, you yeah, work so with such yeah. Whatever we just have the committee, fine. You know, if we, they want to, are willing to withdraw to my ordinance, but end of the day, you know, we set up these committees. Yeah, Let's so talk about it. Sure. Yeah. But they, even yeah. though we suspend, people get the ticket already. It doesn't make any difference. You know? Okay. Um, I just want to, yeah. this is off topic, so I don't want to go too far. I just want to plant a bug in people's heads. But one thing that I, a lot of my constituents are just talking to me about is the kind of proliferation of tickets mm -hmm. and, and a very high price to that. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that might be something as a council we want to think about yeah. how we address. Yeah, yes, we can do so. that. Okay. Right. So, so, council president, what I'm going to do, yes. I'm going to withdraw 3i, you know, and uh, you, let's go 3h, and uh, maybe we set up a committee. <coughs> Find out some general ways of the problem. You just told them to draft a resolution to establish a committee. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whoever wants to be on it. Yep. Oh, I'm not looking to do that. <laughs> I, I don't understand why the prosecutor or what's his name, the head judge up there, just can't void these summonses for now until this is all straightened out. I, I don't know the law. That, that doesn't make sense. And I think, Peter, then maybe you should call him up and you should tell him hold all these damn tickets because it's a joke. I guess if they get ordered, they would have to answer for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So yeah, there, there, there is a danger that right. you can There's probably no see the potential logical conclusion if the yeah. law department were to call the municipal court and tell them to stand down on a certain it's subset of it. violations that have been issued by other duly appointed uh, inspectors. They're legal, right? yeah. they're they're by legal. law, you tweet it, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So it's Twitter. Council President, and those public clear. We we draw three I, okay? Proposed okay. Point three I. Yes. So we draw three I, okay? Let's go. Good. Mm -hmm. Let's go. No, no, no. The one that would be based on this. Okay. okay. We'll be drafting. I, I'm going to ask that we skip three J and come back to it. She's going to bring a calendar over from that. What is it, three J? Okay. Okay. Should we go through second readings? <coughs> How about three J? She's going to come back. She's on coming back. She She's going to come back for a second. Just to right. Some information. So Any second readings. On second readings. We did the four A and four B, right? Anyone else have questions on no, that? We didn't. Do no, they did the four B, four C. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four B, four C. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. So four uh, A on, on the West Side SID. Um, I'd like to start and let the councilwoman finish um, the conversation as it's her ordinance. And, um, so I want to start by, by first uh, publicly here apologizing to Councilperson Prinzeri. Mm -hmm. Last time we spoke about this, I was uh, lost my temper and that was inappropriate, and, um, and so I apologize for that. Um, um, but, but I will say that I'm still, um, I haven't expressed this at the, because this wasn't heard until several meetings ago. So I want to let everyone know where I stand in this, which is that um, I, I have deep concerns about this. And um, I know the councilwomen have worked very hard on this. I work with their staff and the steering committee and other folks um, in bringing this forward. Um, when this was discussed in the past, um, I had concerns that would be driven by uh, the Westside Community Alliance and by community folks rather than kind of the business interests around this. Um, I expressed that to you, Brian, even when other former council people um, thought to, to introduce this at that time. Um, <coughs> I recognize that uh, there are other, um, that there's been opposition and that some of that was ginned up by, um, for, for political reasons potentially in some way, but I also think there's some validity to that as well, right? So I, I myself and um, went out and walked to uh, West Side Avenue and talked to businesses. And um, I can assure you that uh, the vast majority of property owners and businesses who are going to be the members of this SID are not um, in, in support of, of this moving forward. And it may not be because of what, what it is and what's being proposed per se. Um, there is the idea that there is the timing is not right, that after a revaluation, 
if you look at some of the numbers as I have, and I'll, I'll share that with folks, um, as still compiling it, but uh, some people seeing tax increases as a result of the revaluation. Some of that was reported on NJ.com. Many of the, some of the businesses as much as three times an increase in their property um, taxes. And then the news of a payroll tax, which um, for many of them may not impact them at all because they have Jersey City residents, but it's the uncertainty of not even knowing whether it's going to impact them ultimately. And then to know that this all in the span of essentially 11 months. Um, and so all of that um, with the idea that they, they look around Ward B and West Side Avenue, and I've heard from them talking about the idea that you know, there's a lack of police presence, the quality of life, uh, the awnings, and things like that. All things that the councilman rightly, rightfully points out and says that the SID could be a remedy to this. That, um, they say, and I probably would agree with them at some level on certain things, that um, the SID could be a solution for, met for some things, but that some of these things, and I would say this for all SIDs, Central Avenue, McGinley Square, Jackson Hill, and I've said it in the past as well, that it's the responsibility of government to take care of some of this stuff, make sure that there's police there, make sure that the, we send out inspectors to make sure that the awnings and things like that are appropriate and the signage and, um, is appropriate around those areas. Um, it's not the responsibility of the businesses necessarily to ante up and pay more to do that, to have that sort of enforcement. Um, there are other things, and I'm talking to folks, ideas that people had that I heard um, from folks, but I would say there's, there's three primary things. The first thing is being, again, most people weren't aware or not aware of it, and, um, and so uh, as a result of not being aware, their, their needs aren't necessarily reflected in kind of the construction of this to begin with and how it's moving forward, and it seems like um, if you ask many of them that they think it's a fait accompli, like it's done at this point, and that uh, you don't really have a lot of opportunity. <coughs> I've talked to many longtime owners. Some of them will be there. Um, Gary's Sweet Shop is, is opposed, although he's, he's made it clear to me he's not gonna come out to speak. Um, but he's, he's expressed and he said it was okay for me to let people know that he is opposed to it. Um, Miss America Diner, uh, the owners there um, are opposed to this as well. They're not property owners, they're leasing, um, which I learned for the first time. I always just assumed that a diner sitting out there like that, <laughs> that they own that property over there as long as they've been there. But, um, but they don't, and, um, but, but they're opposed to that. And, and the owner there is, uh, is, is, works in the tax collector's office, right? So they're, they're familiar with the, kind of the tax collection around the, the SIDs. Um, you know, the other thing I'll point out is that the, if uh, you look at the, the study report on which this is the basis of uh, kind of um, developing an SID, it says that uh, um, it talks about the great diversity uh, in, in West Side Avenue. Um, and, and so uh, it mentions very prominently, and uh, maybe I'm taking this a little personally, that the Filipino community and other ethnic communities are there, immigrant communities are there, and that, um, that they've been a vital force in, in West Side Avenue up, up till that time and how they've been involved, and yet very few or little of that community has, has been engaged in that process, or they don't feel that way at least. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't create those, those um, perceptions of, of what this is. Um, I just went out and elicited and solicited support, uh, people's opinions about it, and that's what I've, I've been returned. Now I recognize many of you haven't heard directly, maybe you've seen the, and that the Facebook video is probably questionable, and that's why I also went out to go knock on doors. Um, maybe you've uh, seen the story on NJ.com and kind of um, see a couple of businesses reflected there and think that that's not necessarily reflective of the entire area. Um, but I can assure you that's not the case, and I'm fairly confident that on Wednesday you're going to see, um, when people come, that um, they're going to let it be known that uh, they're, not, they're not terribly happy with this. Um, I would ask that folks look to put this aside. I shared this with uh, Charlene Burke, who's one of the steering committee members. She asked me, what, do you th what would be your plan for this if you were to move forward? If it wasn't to be passed, I said, Look, I don't think an SID is a bad thing at all. I think that um, the that people in the, the, the in West Side Avenue that they think that government has failed them. Like if you talk to those business owners, and they think that they ha that we're not going to deliver services to them anyway. It's just a money grab. Is how they look at it. I don't think that's the intention here at all to, to make it just a money grab per se, but. Um, um, but there's a lack of faith and trust in like what's going to be done. And so these are the people who are supposed to represent and be members of the SID in that sense. And so um, 
I think that you take some time to like spend, and I would work with the councilwoman and other, other at-larges as well, and anyone else in the administration, to say, let's bring these members in, of the, the business community and property owners into the fold, into the process, and, and get a better sense of what their needs are, address some of that stuff through government services that is, as it exists now, and um, restore their trust and faith in government um, so that uh, they feel like that if they're gonna, we're gonna tax them an additional tax, that they feel like it's actually gonna go somewhere. Because as many of them have said, they, they go, they're living paycheck to paycheck um, by, uh, uh, on a thread, their, their margins are so thin there that uh, they can't imagine um, spending three, four hundred, five hundred dollars or thousands of dollars in some cases um, additional SID assessment. Um, so that's my case, I would say. I'd ask you to all consider um, putting this aside, ergo tabling it um, and, uh, on Wednesday. And I'll turn it back over to the council. Okay, so some back story. Um, as many of you know, this has been in the works for, some would say going back to almost 20 years. Um, more specifically, um, about seven. And there have been a number of people involved in the process from doing the feasibility study to doing the outreach then and then the outreach now. Um, a steering committee got together, comprised predominantly of property and business owners across the commercial corridor. They started doing postcard mailings and other mailings telling people that they were having these meetings. They were meeting monthly from the beginning of the year until about summer. And then they another out, so there have been different levels of outreach that have been done. I've also spoken with many of them my own self, and I, quite honestly, I, I do get different information. So we had two public meetings in October. There was a mailing done to all of the affected people in the property area or the, in the district itself. Um, and then there was an additional meeting um, that was held, but quite honestly, I, I will say, you know, I, I was not made aware of that meeting. And I think that it was a missed opportunity to share information with some of the people that may not have been part of the process from the beginning, whether it was because they couldn't make the meeting or they you know, really wasn't something that was on their radar, even if they were something information. Now, I've also gone out and spoken with um, some of the people that, have, that are opposed to it. Some of them, actually, quite honestly, I had a conversation with um, Miss America Diner and I explained to them the ability to do matching grant funds to fix things like their signage. And I was told they're on board. So I think that um, that's, there's some back and forth like that that's been happening, depending on who's having the conversation with whom. Um, there was a lot of misinformation that was shared. And I think that that caused a lot of confusion with people. And when you have people that are going out and trying to have somebody, you know, they, they're not in favor, but they're gonna share that misinformation. And so real conversation was not able to have been had with some of these people. And I quite honestly find that very frustrating. Um, there have been a number of people that have worked on this, they wanna see it go through. And I, I understand the concern about the timing of it. I don't love it either. My concern though is if it's set aside now, another year goes by, another six months, and West Side Avenue is still the same. I think that there's things that we can do better as a city, and I've actually been working very closely with Captain Nestor, bringing him down the commercial corridor, meeting some of these businesses as we've learned problems. We've had some success getting some of the homeless people off the street with one of the officers who's now a detective who's worked very closely with people who provide homeless services. Um, now, for me as the new council person, I've only been in going on my 12th month. But I've attacked some of these problems very seriously. We're working with PSE and Gian Lighting. We're, you know, when they had the bike cops, I worked very closely with De Deputy Chief Vutsis at the time on where to put them along West Side Avenue to help with some of these issues. We've started to do some block building initiatives, and I understand that people are frustrated. They don't trust that you know the government's not going to be involved somehow. But they also, you know, there there's there is optimism at the end of the skepticism. i you know, and so I I would say that to not move forward would also be detrimental. I think that um, these are things that can help, especially with some of the businesses if they are living paycheck to paycheck and you have a special improvement district, you can apply for grant matching programs. You can work to the DOT to do streetscape improvements and get grant funding for that. And these are things that are not gonna be considered unless an SID is in place. And these are things that are going to be very helpful for them. Um, you know, every person who is in the SID is a member. They budget has, this ordinance is only to designate. It does not set the budget, and it does not, um, that, that happens next. That's the next step. 
And so that would be comprised of the steering committee and other members who want to come in and have that conversation. Then they will you know, do the board elections with staggered terms. The board is comprised of, um, originally it was nine, I think that the steering committee is looking to move it to 11. So there can be participation with the two colleges as advisory position only. Um, and I would also suggest to them that with the community person, maybe make that advisory as well. So the people that are voting on everything that comes to the executive board are all business and property owners. But, um, you know, I just, I, I believe that this is something that will help and that not hurt. And that is why I'm behind the steering committee and this ordinance. Can you postpone it for a month and have a big meeting here in City Hall and bring these people in that are objecting to it and explain it to them? We've had a number of meetings, and at this point in time, I mean, I, you know, I've even sat down with them my own self, and I'm not, I mean, everything is on the table, but I would have to take that back to the steering committee, too. There's a number of people now that are brought into this process that do need to be consulted. You see, can I say something? Yeah. And the first person who yeah. makes decision, we draw or not, this audience, you are the one who has to decide. Mm -hmm. And also, I have to say something. First SI created with Georgia City is a central level SI 26 years ago. When I created the central level SI, we put you in that called sunset. Every two years, member gonna decide we're gonna continue SI or not. 26 years, every two years we ask the members we're gonna dissolve that SI or we're gonna keep going. You know what happened? The people wanna renew SI every two years. Now go back to every five years we ask them because what they pay, what they get a benefit from the through the SID, huge. And especially Central Avenue now today, only five percent of the vacancy rate. There were 250 merchants and the five percent used to be 80% occupancy, and the 20% stores empty was, but now only 5 95 percent of the space occupants in central you know why because of a central avenue sid when they knew business people come in what i have to do what kind of license we need what kind of department we deal with that the sid able to provide the service something city not provide and the sid provide maintenance marketing as a whole you know and provide administration so people come up to Central Avenue, especially newcomers, they love it to have it. See, that's why 26 years, even though we ask every two years, the people want to stay in the SID. Not only Central Avenue SID, Newark Avenue, Journal Square, McKinney Square, even Jackson, and the Exchange Place. Every SID is governed by members, not City of Jersey, they provide a service and not substitute the missing service. It's a, it's a supplemental service they provide, something cities are missing. Not only that, SID fee is not the tax. SID assessment, not SID tax. They mislead the people. When you SID tax, you have to have pay. Not the SID tax. It's the SID assessment. So even though the board member decide, dissolve the SID, if they not approve their budget, yearly budget, then without money, SID cannot function, they automatically dissolve. So this is the very good service provided people, you know, and some people easily say that, oh, you gotta reach out everybody. Listen, nobody can reach out every single property owner, every single that uh, 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 a business owner. There were some people didn't get notice, but I'm, the, I'm telling you now, even though you 100% notice, there are always people, some people claim that I never get the notice. That's their fault. Another one I'm gonna make clear. Councilman Chris Gesson, when he left council person, he tried to bring up the west side side, aside, he working on it. And the councilman was a chico, he was a delight. Councilor Michael, I'm going to bring the West side. we're working on it. I mean, I spoke with Jessica Hillings last night, more than one and a half hours. 
And she understands now the benefit to have SID. As, as you, as an elected officer, also as a community leader, even though people claim as a leader, you gotta lead the people. Don't afraid, they always claims come out. But this is the right things to say West Side for the prepare for future. If they they want to start and develop mm -hmm. and they build a new commercial area, that area is make us as the West Side more difficult to bring back. 26 years ago, Central Avenue down to drain, ready to drain because of shopping mall, outlet. Today it's a small in the, the retail area. We gotta fight online. Amazon Dark, all different companies. So this is a time we need more the business community united together, uh, properly united together. We gotta find a way to survive. But I'm gonna ask the city of Jersey, right? When you first one, when we organized SID, it was a partnership we created with SID and the city of Jersey City. At the time, there were huge grant available, so city can give us some share of time. Okay. But I, I know you have a we have to be understand desire to, to rehash the UEC. This is council president. Let me finish it. But now today, there is no UEG grant. But city of Jersey, six hundred twenty million dollars of budget per year. At the least, city should be grant for hundred thousand dollars SID to can be pre-create with their some own program. Half a million dollars or six hundred thousand dollars out of six hundred twenty million dollars is not even drop in the bucket actually. Smaller than that drop. So if you send to at West Side Avenue they create SID, then you as a business administrator, next year budget we should set aside some kind of grant, grant dollars to help them especially West Side Avenue, Central Avenue, and the uh, Journal Square, and the McKinney Square, and the Jackson. You know why? Downtown Newark, the downtown SID, they have a revenue resource. Mm -hmm. They rent the Grove Street, That's they true. collect almost $100,000 a year, rent, yeah. income. But rest of their area don't have that, especially or that. They have no resource credit okay. stuff. Okay. 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 <laughs> what is it? <laughs> right. You know, and the so, uh, uh, journal secure, yeah. or make you secure. Since we don't have that kind of a, <coughs> and, uh, revenue resource. So city of Jersey, next year, you gotta come up different ways, really help the small business. So I don't want to give up, move on, okay. and if people are gonna beat you up, take it. So, <laughs> okay. Can, can I just respond to what, one thing he said about that? And, and I have nothing else to say after this, just misinformation. You'll, on Wednesday, you'll find out about Chico Ramshaw, Chris Gatson, and Jessica Hellinger. They will all be there. Um, I'm not saying that as, uh, but you can't just put that out there and suggest that, uh, um, that, uh, that they're supportive of this effort. So but they can do that. But now, let me tell you one thing. Yeah. Come on. Come on. No, let me finish it. No, I'm done. I'm done. It's okay. Uh, yeah. it's fine. Rebuild not only hit the West Side Avenue. Rebuild hit the every property on the Georgia City. Number one, yeah. pay your tax is not only to hit the West Side. It they hit the everybody have a right. business. So that is not can be excused because already Central Avenue side, the old asset already paid, and the top of that, top of that, this is the right time. They have no tomorrow. This is the time should we take action for the future. If you miss it now, you're never going to be happy. Why? Nobody want to pay extra. Mm -hmm. But when the people realize that what they pay extra, they, what they got the benefit out of that, they will delight. Like a central avenue. 26 years. They just have to be educated by you. Yes. So, we got to explain to them. When they, Perfect. When, they, when the people come in, I'm going to explain to them. You and me, or yes. every council person, each of you should get SID. Tell them why Jackson Hill Avenue, why you have SID. The other, the other thing too that I would say to this point now is that the SIG managers have become very well organized. They have quarterly meetings with the city where they're sharing their concerns. Mm -hmm. They have meetings with the police precinct. Some of them have programs worked out where if there's an area that is adversely affected, they get on the phone, they call, they go down there immediately. So again, I understand <coughs> that there's a level of skepticism 
and mistrust, especially with some of these businesses that have been around for a very long time. But that is not the intent of this. Um, the other thing that I will say is I did ask um, the business administrator to um, work with me, the tax assessor, to get a before and after snapshot of the reval with the commercial properties affected in the proposed district. And over, is it 52 or 54 percent? 58 percent. 58 percent. 60 percent, yeah. Were either flat or went down. The other percentage went up, but some of those did get hit very hard. When I went and spoke with some of these people before before this even started around the reval, a number of them had not yet done an appeal. And so now, as I hear these issues, I go to them, like Hendrick and I have sent them information on how they can prepare themselves for the, for the back when it was the informal and then the formal appeal process before the end of the year. And then again, in January, when this comes up again, and you know, and so it's, so we're doing the work, and my concern is that there's been so much misinformation that's been floated since the video went, and you know that that it's just there. There's more confusion now than anything. It didn't help the process. It hurt the process. And I would also say that um, you know to to Councilman Yun's point, it's you know it, it, nobody's ever going to tell you it's a good time to have an assessment. The assess and the assessments are also tax deductible. They're a business improvement deduction, and they can check with their accountants on that. Some of them already have, and they know this. So it's, you know, again, this is information we're getting out to them in additional one sheets and walking with them and saying, you know, we understand that you have some concerns. Let's sit down and talk about it. And um, so that's, that's kind of it. And like I said, my concern is that even if it's pushed off a little bit longer, by the time everything gets set up again, another year is going to go by. West Side Avenue is going to look the same. You know, Jean Burns from J Uniform, she was part of the discussion 20 years ago. She was part of the last discussion. And she's like, you know what? Nothing has changed. We have to try something. Other business owners have echoed the same thing. So I, 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 I hear the skepticism. I understand that this might be a painful time for some people. But I just, um, my, my bigger concern and the, the overarching concern is that it's, it's going to be a missed opportunity, and we're not going to be able to really get the West Side going in a way that's positive for it. So, Mira, can I ask you a question? Jim Burns is supporting? Yeah. 26 years ago, Jim Burns against the SID, West Side and SID. Yeah. Now, 26 years later, she now realized that the importance of SID and impact, positive impact of SID. Let me ask you, do they West Side have any holiday line? We got them this year because they were donated, and um, but they haven't had them since we had UEZ funding. Council President, she said right. You know why they started Central Avenue SID? 27 years ago, when we put in the holiday light, based on donation by a merchant, so only pay certain merchants always contributed, rest of it, they get free ride. So about time do we say, fairness. I'll just, my final you argument know, just, That's the beginning of that. You can continue to have it. My final argument on this, it's, and I think it's just, uh, you can't ignore it, which is that the members, I the members, the people who are supposed to be represented in this, they don't want it, right? Or the vast majority of them don't even know about it. So if you're not including them in the process, then how representative of, 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 um, of will this SID be of the needs and the interests of those people it's supposed to be represented? I would tell you, not, not very representative. It's going to be representative of other people's interests. So now I'm not suggesting that's a bad, that the people have a bad intended. I'm saying there are things to learn from the people who are there, who are the natives of the area. Um, and so uh, people should listen. We should listen to those calls. And, 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 and you'll hear them on Wednesday. That's what I'll so end with that. So we call the people, I don't, I don't get this, because it sounds like you know, somebody, we're saying that people are not being honest in this council. Here we have you saying that the, I, the, the, I didn't say it was not honest. Well, no, here we have you saying that the people at the west side, they're not happy with this. Yeah. And here we have Mira saying that the people on the west side are happy with this. Okay. So, you know, that's concerning, you know. So why don't we just, you know, we're, we're beating a dead horse. Yes, I agree. Right. You move I'm right and, uh, and they never yeah, Wednesday we vote. Yeah. We'll have a public hearing and then we'll vote. Right. And that's so fair. You can that's fair. hear the calls of the public. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So as long as you not back up, I'll okay. support you.
We're trying to bring an end to this. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know what, the council president, I try to just want to make sure that quite the problem because uh, that some members, not some, some people don't want to pay SID assessment because we have, we have not doing that as a represent. Then 300,000, 50,000 property of Jersey, nobody want to pay tax. So we're not going to collect the property tax. Okay. So you know what? We've got a really the legal right. have to leave people. Yeah. Let's move it up. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Oh. So what is it now? 4D. 4D. Okay. 4D. Uh, anything on second readings? Anything else? What is 4D? 4D. Anybody have any questions? That is the question. I'm asking. Oh wait, 4B is the uh, Which one is four? Powerhouse? No, the Terezzo project. But there's two 4Bs, right? Or am I seeing that's something? The old, that's the old 4B, Terezzo. Okay. Terezzo. 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 That's, Terezzo. On the table. that's the one that's on the table yes. agenda. It's now 11A. It's now 11A, yes. Okay, so it's not 4B, it's 11A. It's 11A. It's 11A on the table agenda. What is it? 11A? 11A, that's... Been supplied it twice. It's city ordinance 18006. No. On our first agenda this year. There are, there are going to be changes. I, I haven't seen this I mean, yet. So there are going to be changes. Someone to this. No, about what, what is this one? Like, I don't understand. What did you talk about? 18006. What is this? Oh, you know what? Um, I spoke with the. Uh, so I was looking, I'll, I'll just briefly talk about this. I was, um, if you look at um, your table agenda 11A, it is uh, the Terzetto 30 year abatement. It's 18006. Which was um, tabled by the council um, back in earlier this year. Um, anyway, on, I was looking on to- On Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. So I was looking to remove it, to make a motion to table it and remove it from the table agenda. Councilman, um, um, Robinson, um, with, this is his, his ward, and he, he was amenable to that as well. Um, but after consultation with the uh, developer, they've asked uh, to wait till January um, to, to, to take that action. So we'll wait till January. Mm -hmm. So this will okay. so stay on the table agenda. But okay. Doesn't the table agenda expire? No, it expires at the end of the term. Oh, oh, okay. sorry. sorry. Okay. I, I, was, I was trying to protect you. Uh, we're on the record here. We're trying to make sure we get on the. So this one is not going to be torn. No. We're leaving. Okay. We're leaving the table okay. agenda okay. alone, and forget this long piece of paper you got. Well, hold on to it and make it back if you want to take a look at that. I'll send you the amended ordinance too. So the draft. Second one. No, there was a public hearing. There, there was a public hearing. But if it's there, amended, then we'll have to have another public hearing. Here. There's so two ways to do this. Two ways to skin this cat. This was prior to the close of the public yeah. hearing. Prior. Prior. So basically, we could just introduce a replacement ordinance. Leave this on the table agenda. Introduce. There's only one way to skin this cat. Can we talk about it when we get to Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so no matter what, we're not yeah. doing anything. Okay. Can we just sure. All right, we're not, we're not going to do it surgically. We're going to, okay. Okay. What are we doing? Okay. Let's, uh, let's, um, I, I want to go back to 3J. Do we have those calendars? So 3J, introducing this ordinance that would um, uh, change the, essentially, the council schedule. Um, everybody. And I talked about this at the last council meeting. Um, this one essentially keeps it on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month, um, but changes the date of the caucus. Um, rather than it being on the Monday preceding, it's on the following week preceding that uh, council meeting. So a full nine days before, yeah. 10 days before the council meeting between caucus and council, and then the agenda meeting would fall a full 13 days um, prior with the agenda being published, I mean, sorry, would fall 14 days, two weeks prior 
with an agenda being published. There's uh, still two meetings a month, though. It is still two meetings a month, keeping the calendar essentially. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was. I thought it would be like one meeting a month. Okay. It'd be two meetings. We see what month. happens when we get to one meeting a month. We got a hundred items. Still two meetings. Yeah. It's, uh, There's still two meetings so a month. What did we discuss? This one. So three yeah, J's. Yeah. Uh, let's let's talk this. Out. Out. Let's talk right. this out. This is, this, is, this is the new schedule here proposed. No, no, so, so there's no, a schedule that's being proposed tonight, which is the same old schedule, using the same old formula of the current ordinance that's on the books. Okay. This is a new ordinance mm -hmm. that would amend it and then change the schedule so it reflects like this. Oh, okay. okay. But it wouldn't take effect until the new ordinance is, um, is After passed. After the first week, second week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But essentially, it keeps the council meetings the same second and fourth Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then the caucus meetings would be Monday. on the Monday, but not the Monday, not the Monday two days before, but Monday a full week, week almost nine days before. So essentially the public, as well as the city council, after the agenda is published, look, the agenda meeting can be changed to whatever day that is. Um, currently, I was suggesting on a Wednesday, uh, which would be two weeks before, as we normally do it anyway, on, on a Wednesday, that is. That would give it 13 days, but I'm amenable and talking to Robert and um, BA and corporation counts and other folks, they have other challenges in trying to get the, the agenda out. So <laughs> that was my question, yeah. Council President. How, how does the BA, the clerk, and the uh, and the uh, and the corporation council feel about this? I mean, have we like chatted with them? We we talked about it, but uh, we think they're they're free to express their opinions about it. Um, they're gonna have, they, they've expressed to me that they have challenge. It's challenging to more than challenging, they would say, to to put it together. Um, and that it is. To have it on top of each other. Uh, I would argue that it's, I'll just make my, my argument here, that we, we can't create, you know, there's only so many ways to create time around this stuff, right? And so this is one solution around that. If somebody has a better solution around it, I'm all ears. Um, but I want to see more time in the, in the schedule. I think the public does too. And then I would argue that we can chew, chew gum and, and walk at the same time on this stuff, right? So we have an agenda meeting in the morning and we have a council meeting in the evening or an agenda meeting on a Tuesday and a council meeting on a Wednesday. Like, there are ways folks just have to kind of compartmentalize things and it's just a matter of really changing the way we do our work, but it doesn't really change the... It obligates everyone every week. One day every week for a council meeting. That's the first no, thing it's that's true. That's a council caucus and a council meeting. Well, it obligates them to have to put one night a week towards either a caucus or a meeting. As opposed to two in a week. Two every second week. Yeah, two every second week with one day in between the caucus and the council to make a decision. That's, the, well, that's only rare because we just had the Thanksgiving Monday. holiday and, and the, a religious the normal, holiday. Normal thing. It's a Monday night. And then you make a decision on a Wednesday, so it's like that's two business days. But two business the council days. gets the agenda on the prior Thursday, so it has the weekend. We have a caucus. And, and you say it's the norm, but we just got it on a Friday. And I can I can tell you we probably uh, half of and I petition. I, I can petition. tell you half the agendas this year have been on Friday. We received it on right. No, I don't. I I, I, I would vow, I would swear on a Bible on that. Like, okay, I'll bet you your house on it. Okay, I'll tell you that. I'll bet your house on it. So I, 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 I want to describe. Uh, I want to describe one of the issues we talked about at the agenda meeting, and, and I, I first want to say that uh, we're all for giving you more time for uh, knowing what's going on, uh, and we're happy to work with the council on this. But just, I just want to explain the situation that we would be up against. So if you look at your calendar here, for example. There's a council meeting Wednesday, May 8th, uh, and then the next caucus is Monday, May 13th. And this happens a lot where it's like less than a week from council meeting to caucus. So Wednesday, May 8th, council meeting, we're there until whatever time. The next day, we would have to prepare the agenda for the next caucus. That Thursday, we have to prepare it for the 13th. So it takes us quite a while, believe it or not, to put all this stuff together, and we're running around for days putting stuff together for the agenda meeting, and then after the agenda meeting, it takes us days, and that's why sometimes it does take until Friday. Not all the time, but it does sometimes take longer than we'd like, just because yeah, it's it so happened practical. Friday. It happened Friday in August because we had one meeting, <clears throat> and Friday this month because we had one meeting. 
And so I would argue we, that people will just, look, we, we all have to, make, we have to make adjustments around the way we, we use our time around these things, including the city council, okay? <laughs> We're not the, you guys aren't the only ones working on this stuff. And then I would also yeah. argue that, uh, um, that you, you, well, well, I think there, there may be a need to have the, call, the, the meeting on a, a Thursday after a council meeting. Um, it could be on a Friday, it could be, it could be on the Tuesday, it could be... Um, so, we, yeah, so, right, so, so uh, it, it might, so there's a couple of things that I just want to bring up. So there's, there's one of the things on the agenda is the digital agenda system. And we're pretty, we're pretty confident that's going to help speed things up. So we have our agenda meeting Wednesday morning, and we might be able to have that agenda ready Wednesday afternoon, depending on how this works. Like, I, and I that's think coming up point next okay. is this meeting. Well, yeah, yeah, so so then, why don't we give that a chance at least to work? You know, so we can see. I mean, otherwise, I mean, I actually, I, I, I suggested at the call, at the uh, agenda meeting. I said we could. I did say let's put yes. the mm -hmm. digital agenda in place. And um, once it's fully on live, live and, and then move to the new calendar and where uh, so so for the council to speed on it. We're we're probably gonna implement it faster than you see laptops and, and devices in front of you just because it, it eliminates a lot of the workflow issues for us, whether or not we're ready to show it on a screen yet. That's probably gonna be two phases. So we'll be able to implement very quickly uh, and be able to test it out and see how it What goes. people don't realize is after a city council meeting, the city clerk has a full day of work to get things into the newspapers, to the newspapers on time, to be advertised for the following meeting. I can also be preparing an agenda for the next following Monday's no. caucus. No, Robert, could we, could and, and to, to, to that end, if I may suggest, I, I also offered when we had this conversation that the council could appropriate additional money for the clerk, because you're always talking about being understaffed, so that you could have more staff members to be able to do those sort of tasks. It, it's not the point. It's I have to wait until the council takes an action before. You're we saying it's there's not enough manpower to do the job. No, no, no. I'm saying manpower. there is. It's personally my responsibility to supervise the insertion of the proper publications so that you can actually vote properly and not violate the Open Public Meetings Act. Make sure that there are at least seven days before the public hearings are held. Sometimes ordinances require 10 days. The Thursday after a council meeting, I am ensconced in work all day and couldn't consider for five minutes thinking about the next meeting, the next caucus, which could be the next Monday. It's does just, that affect does the corporation council the same way? I mean, you guys have concerns about that? Or? I mean, I, I think, you know, the one concern I would have, Robert, can, can we even comply, we as a city clerk, I mean, let's use the example here, Wednesday, May 8th, if we had, you know, the caucus meetings are public meetings, they need to be properly sunshine, is right. there even enough time to properly sunshine? Even if we had all the manpower in the world, is, that even, is there enough time to sunshine the caucus that would come on Monday, May 13th? Sunshining this is the easiest thing I just told advertise. You told you I advertise it. I advertise it. <laughs> we do this already. Okay, yeah. so if we're going to publishing, you know, the what's on the agenda for that conference. This would be a perfect this would be a perfect schedule if we were a township of forty thousand people. So it's not the perfect schedule because in a township in, in a city as huge as we are, we should give ourselves less time to be able to to review materials. Some no, That's some pe some towns only have one meeting a month. Yeah. So I think if I could just speak for a couple minutes, one is I mean I'm very sensitive to administrative concerns. So I you know I don't think the council president, but certainly myself, I'm not you know wedded to this mm -hmm. schedule. And I do think it's important to have a solution that provides more time, both for the public and for us. And, and I would just say you know yes, you get the agenda a little bit in advance, but caucus is the moment you can ask questions where issues are really raised. And then you have a sprint to Wednesday, and this is a part-time job. I work on okay. Tuesdays. So it, it does create a, or Tuesday and Wednesday, so it creates a, a challenge for me personally. Um, so I mean, if you're saying, Robert, that this Monday doesn't work, you know, would a, instead of doing the council caucuses on Mondays, you know, do the third, you know, then we have that whole week, right? Yeah, if you could do it on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, you know. <coughs> 
what what are the other alternatives that meet the goal of having more time, giving the public more time to consider, would meet or maybe are a little bit better for you to administrate? I, I guess is the question, do you want to have this caucus earlier or do you just want the agenda earlier? The caucus, I mean for the me. Caucus, I, yeah. I want I, I my personal preference is Two, two, two meetings in a, in a week is tough. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it takes a Wednesday and, and the second thing is because the caucus is 48 hours and then sometimes 24 hours before yeah. the meeting, yeah. it creates a real kind of rush given that we learn things at caucus. If you so look at the schedule questions. I prepared this year, anytime we bump a caucus from a Monday to a Tuesday, I bumped the meeting to Thursday to give us two full business days. Okay. So why don't we do Monday two full and Thursday? Thursdays? So no. You, you get the agenda on a Thursday afternoon, and you're asked to vote on it six days later. On Thursday evening at best. At best. That's literally. That's the for the most part, it goes out at four o'clock because uh, we're still yeah, shoving things into it. <laughs> if you come in yeah, after yeah, hours, it's uh, okay. It's the beginning of the day. It's going on at yeah. Thursday at four o'clock from now, and I'm not holding things for. It's been functionally right. It's the same amount of work. It's just moving. Right? We're not adding more meetings. We're not adding more agenda items. We just have to redistribute. And I guess what I'm asking is, is there a better way to redistribute than what the council president has proposed? But it still meets this goal of giving us more time. Is there you know, some third alternative that we can you know get to? So, can I say? What about the new Martin system? The Ex explain the new system. How would the new system help us? So right now that we, might be we an basically answer. have paper flowing from all corners of the city okay. into a stack that shows up in the law department on Tuesday and it's shuffled through and things are still moving around. Like literally if something's wrong, someone has to run it upstairs to this person, that person. Uh, and then it shows up on my desk on Wednesday, typically, and then sometimes it bears. Uh, and then we all talk about it. Uh, and then it takes, you know, after we have our, our meeting on Wednesday, it takes a day or two to like fix all the things and move the stuff and get that and, and if it's all done digitally it's sort of like okay let's just go in in that moment and change the word or add the sentence or have this change or it just digitally sent us instead of having to have somebody literally hand deliver a hard copy from so and so and, and that sort of thing so a lot of the transactional stuff is sort of done the, the system also makes the agenda for us so what the clerk does after we go through it all literally has to type up every sentence on your agenda mm -hmm. thing and make sure it's spelled right, right. and put and it just this just does that. Every every ordinance and resolution is digitally added into the system automatically. It's there and to the Okay now is there a law stating that we can only see so many resolutions or ordinance a meeting? No. Why I must we see all of this? It is the discretion of the council. Well won't we cut all of this down? That's something the only reason why I'm so, saying that because then if you have so many at each it's meeting, because, you can get through it with a yeah. decent amount of time because part of our yeah. challenge is leaving here like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, because we manipulated the November schedule to accommodate the League of Municipalities, we would have had the meeting on the 29th so. and it would have been spread out more. You would have had less on this agenda. There would have been more on the but meeting. Not just the, I'm not it's just not talking that, about yeah. this agenda. It's not the, I'm just saying, it's just not the, it's not the exceptions that are causing the challenge. The information, right. the information overload. So it, it is, the, the, the corporation council started to say that it's the council's discretion. Um, certainly at the agenda meeting, I don't have discretion to be able to keep things off the agenda. I've asked, I've tried, I can't, I don't have the authority. I've been told repeatedly, council president does not have the authority to remove things from the agenda. I've, I've done this for five years, so year after Why? Year. And, and we can state that now. I just asked the question. No. Could we say we're only going to have we so many? We do have discretion. The council does as a whole. Me, okay. not just. The council as a whole, at the start of every meeting, to say, the last 20 items, I vote to remove them from the agenda. Whatever you want to say, right? And say, I'm making this a, a shorter agenda, no matter what you say at this point. We have, that, we have the authority to do that. If we wanted to say that and, yeah, as a group. You shorten it by... Limiting first reading ordinances, that's how we do it. Well, whatever the case is, if it's an ordinance, it's a resolution, whatever you want to remove, whatever we want to remove from the agenda and say we don't have time for this this time around, we can say that right at the start of the meeting, at the start of the meeting on Wednesday, make a motion to remove this item or that item, and just for the sake of expediency and time, we don't have to say that it's for, um, that because I'm opposed to it or whatever the case might be, just say I vote, motion to remove it, delete it from the agenda. That's it. All right, Robert, Mr. Burns, what do you suggest? 
Oh, I've got a quarter minute. Before, before, before you go to that, I'm sorry, Council, Council Lynn Borgia. I mean, we, we, we really got to look at it before we say, Robert, what do you, you suggest? Uh, reading the agenda. Like, let's put, we, have, we have three at larges here. Is there any way that, I mean, it's not written that we can't, but maybe Joyce and I could take turns going to the agenda meeting with you so we could, you know, at least mm -hmm. be another set, you know, of eyes when it has to do with this agenda. Because a lot of the stuff, you know, what do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, hold on a minute. <laughs> large. So you guys have some golden hair in your hair. I didn't. I didn't. Well, we cannot attend then. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What's What's the matter with you? Out. I didn't. I didn't. He didn't mean it, it like that. I didn't just mean trying it to come up with a solution. Yeah, I didn't. Are you sure? It. You got to apologize. Okay, okay, okay folks. We're trying to find a solution because because we are here long. We're we here very long, and and our packs really. You need about really three aids. We're here long. We're here long. Okay, here's my week. My suggestion, going back to the digital agenda, we are, if, if, if the council should approve this digital agenda at this meeting, yeah. you tell us what the start, effective start date after the rollout and the trainings and all that stuff, and then let's try out the calendar with the new digital agenda. Hopefully it expedites things into a way that... Sure, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, that works. Which well, maybe calendar? we save a day or two that way, yeah, and then we can talk which about... Which calendar? The calendar I'm proposing. So you're saying you hold off on this until yeah, we have the digital use the, the current calendar. Look, we're going to have to approve this current calendar no matter what because that's what the yeah, law says. Yeah, yeah. So we, we approve okay. that, and then when uh, you tell us, but you have to yeah, let us know what the effective yeah, yeah. start date is. So, so, so we'll talk to the vendor to see exactly. Well, you know, it'll take a few weeks probably. Do we have a cutoff date? Because you know, I want a date to say, okay, by March, if we don't hear nothing, then we're going to come back again. And come oh, up with a solution. Oh, oh no, no, no. It, it'll, we'll, we'll know by Jan, mid, mid January at the latest. Okay, like, uh, I, I'm assuming one of the January meetings will be able to handle it internally. Uh, you may not notice a difference. We'll probably still print out the package uh -huh. just so we get our workflow piece right. Um, yeah, and, and we'll know immediately. We'll know in, in a meeting or two. As you said, Mr. I'm going to say something that the uh, digital, those paperless, can be. Supplementally for councilmen like me, but not substitute because I have a very bad eye. Sure, I yep. cannot go with the digital. I mean, the, the screen. You'll still you'll yeah. still be able to print it out. The, yes, the, the big benefit. But don't ask me to print out. I got no money to print we, out. We'll still things. print it if you want. We can make it available. Yes, please. As but, long as you as so that the yeah, digital is as a. Uh, 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 We're going to go digital. Who wants to stay paper? Raise your hand if you want it. We're going to vote to go digital. Who wants a paper agenda? Raise your hand. I want paper. I hate this modern generation. So, no, no, no. no, no. Oh, that's right. Okay. Okay. So, he wants his agenda made out of society. Can I say something, Council President? Okay. I agree with the Council President's intention for this yeah. new schedule. Because over the five years uh, when I joined the Council members, mm -hmm. the one of the sad things is that. At the caucus meeting, we discuss certain things, and we ask a certain information. Right, that's key. Yep. Yes, they not provide. I'm not going to tell the certain department, or then defer it to the provide. next agenda. No, you have that power. Listen, if you don't get an answer, defer it to yes. the next agenda. So uh, sometimes I, 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 people will get you the answers you want. I, I, Bob, I, I, can I finish that? They provide information ten minutes before our mm -hmm. council meeting to ask me to prove so. That was one of the bad things, was it? You know, sure. So don't blame the city council change the schedule like that. Enough time both sides in the rush process. Not only that, ourselves, we have time to digest, we have time to research and to study. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason council has come out as a reform so, city so council. And, and I, I totally hear you that it does take us a little longer than we like sometimes to go from caucus to council meeting to give, get all the information we need. I try my best, we try our best to get everything, and sometimes it literally is at the meeting. So, Council time. President, we're going to go this one, the old schedule, and yes. uh, based on yep. that, we're yeah. going to be adjusting, right? And, so, yeah. Can I make a example of logical? I agree with what Michael said about the caucus, because I understand where Robert's coming from, we could withdraw, but you know, some of this information comes at 5.50, and it's not, it's, it's a short period of time for you guys yeah. to get it. Yeah. 
and then it doesn't give us the time to actually have conversation. Yeah. So yes, we could all just say we're gonna if you get us the information at five fifty, we'll vote everything down. But I think generally we're trying to be constructive and think yeah. forward. Um, okay. So you know, I'd like to you know if you get that a day in advance, it gives you time to pick up the phone and call people in a way that, that the current yeah. schedule Some do. do. Feedback. So if if we vote for this and the current calendar as proposed, it doesn't preclude us from amending it in the rest of twenty nineteen. I just want to confirm that, right? No, it doesn't. What I, what I would oh, like to see no, is, no, no. Right. Okay. So I, I would like what I would like to see is less perfunctory voting on something on first reading. I I'll vote on it just because it's a first reading item. I then I advertise it. Sure. I think you'll see more of that. When we see sure. and we see ordinances that go nowhere. Right. I think right. you'll see more. I think you'll see that happen when there's nine days between caucus and council for people to think about it because well, I, I can only speak yeah. for myself, but for first readings. I, I kind of just let it go because Me too, I can't. Because you uh, don't have all the information. I don't have the capacity to read, read through all that stuff uh, between first and second. And the council president. Yep. Oh, Z. I'm, I'm let me finish this one. Z13. We have uh, July and August. This is July and August. So usually we talk about past the budget. And the 10 a.m. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. When we have a city council and right. right. air conditioning right. units, then we use that uh, 10 a.m. meeting from the you know like the public school. But city council has a very strong air condition. We don't have to have a meeting, especially council meeting Wednesday. We should have a 10 a.m. We should go back change that. We change that. Wait, that's a rule right. of the council. But you know what? what? You know what? That's what been that's been a break. No. That's historically been a break for the staff that you bring here and sometimes keep here until 10 and 11 o'clock. Right. That's a. That is you, what it's been. People like this, you're gonna need it. Okay. I know. I wish all the meetings were at 10 a.m. Me too. Yeah. No, this one actually yeah. take away the general public oh, attend the oh, council that. meeting. You know, because they do 10 a.m. because of an air condition issue. We don't have that air condition issue. Oh. And uh, they, to, uh, well, I would say, that, oh, well, our steps need to break. Here, here's another thing, as we think about considering this at a later date. Oh, no, 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 I didn't say my staff needs a break. I said okay. there are statutorily you're, you're important things that need to be done the day after a council meeting to s make an, the next council meeting happen. There's, there's Some, something require attention of the court. That, something for the council to consider when we get to this. I'm here. I'm, if, if the meeting breaks up at three thirty in the morning, I'm here at nine o'clock in the morning to make sure we meet the ten o'clock deadline for the Jersey Journal. Okay. Something to consider for the council okay. as we move towards this at some point. Um, or some form of this, mm -hmm. that the caucuses could be at 10 a.m. as opposed to the council meetings. Council meetings is the public meeting, right? So we want the public to be able to be there at yeah. the time. But if we did all the caucuses, I mean, it's, it's really only the staff here, with a few exceptions. Right. Like, with the exception of Polish statues. Yeah. Um, it's really so just the. Uh, how is the caucus meeting daytime, like at 10 a.m. or 9 a.m.? It makes sense while they're in there. But council meeting, especially when we talk about budget in July and August, mm -hmm. As a 10 a.m., that's why the council, which was uh, screaming, we took a $600 million spend, only three people showed because of 10 a.m. Good. Yeah. I mean, I'd be open to Mondays at 10 yeah, a.m. early. We Before never adopted. Long. We it's never fine. adopted a budget at in the daytime. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, from from the law department's perspective, I think you know. It's, it's a, it is a crunch for us from Monday to Wednesday as well, when there are questions that sometimes require more searching out than just simply looking something up. You know, I mean, I am interested. In, I would love to find a solution to help. But everything is fast tracked onto these agendas. Actually, it, it's, it's an idea gets a, a, someone gets a phone call in the law yep. department, and someone starts drafting an ordinance, and it's got to get down to the clerk's office, get it there by. Four o'clock on, or get it to the agenda meeting. That's not the case here. This is no, but what I'm saying is, everyone now pushed off. Everyone is has one speed. Hurry. Yeah. And when they call up, when they call up the law department, they okay. want something. It it We're getting has late to the evening here. It's just so well, 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 like, like, no. like we're, we're we're committed to making this work for the council. Um, I'm not saying that we are against this. I just think let's continue to talk about it. So. Got it. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay. From the top, 10A. Uh, what? There's no more to talk about. Okay. So I'm authorizing the 
calendar year 2018 appropriation transfers. Yeah, let me get this final page, Council President. Sorry. What's the Yes, we will pull 3J and wait, but we, I would like an answer from the administration by Wednesday as oh, to, oh. can you tell us that or? Wait, about um, when you will implement, like what's your target date to oh, yeah. implement the uh, digital agenda? I will, yeah, by Wednesday I'll welcome the vendor, how long it's going to take. Yeah, yeah. Wait, hold on, pull 3J? We will pull it, because reintroduce it, pending, we'll have to figure out when the start date will be, effective date for the ordinance. Yeah. Uh, because the people were here tonight, basically, they were told this is going to be voted on and passed. No, different, different ones. Uh, it's 3J versus 4J. No, 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 no. uh, You're 4J. You're 4J. 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 You okay. Said 4J. okay. 10 a resolution authorizing calendar year appropriation oh. transfers. John Metro went back to the drawing board and did an excellent job. Um, I, I'm 10A. Brian, is yeah. it the, the transfers, can, can, obviously that was proposed before the council, million dollars for police salary and then yeah. here, can you kind of walk us through what yeah, happened? Yeah, uh, so there was some uh, grant dollars that were uh, found uh, to cover this. The, so uh, another thing I should explain about this is uh, these are projections that are done. Sure. Uh, so in November, the projections looked a little worse than they sure. do now. Um, so we had some grant dollars come in as well. Uh, and it's just basically a target. And, and there are which grant? Uh, it was a police grant. I forget the name of the grant. Well, we would have had to have accepted it into the budget, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, was, it was older grant dollars, yeah. But I asked for yeah, you explanation on that. Yeah. Did you get an answer yet? Did any um, boy? Sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We didn't get all these answers. <coughs> we just decreased the scope. So, as the council president, I mean, the other thing I just request before, this is before the Wednesday yeah. meeting, but any 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 increase that's over a hundred thousand dollars to just have a one sentence explanation, you know, could just be a person transferring, which is obviously not. Yeah. Okay. But I do want to have a sense of if there are projections that are over what we thought. I just want to have an understanding of what those are. Sure. Um, so if it's you know if it's a salary transfer, it's only a few, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like I don't know. It's like ten, five to ten that are over a hundred. So, so John yeah. Metro is, is out till Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, I guess. So Donna responded to me. I will forward this email mm -hmm. um, to everyone. She sent it to me today at 1 o'clock and, and um, had a response, but also said that Elizabeth Castillo, who handles the grants, um, is out of the office. I'll, I'll, so, get, I'll get the info. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. the grants. Oh. And uh, the Brian? Yeah. CFO. So, the reason I'm, I'm going to ask one thing is, when there were four supply event in the waterfront, yeah. what's the name of that, uh, that uh, the singer, artist, Snoopy? Snoopy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Snoopy, yeah. Yes. Charlie Brown opened yes. it for him. Yes. At the Vince Corp. Oh, <laughs> At that time, I, as a big green room, when I heard that, they spend almost a million dollars over time as a police department. You know, where the money going to be paid for? Uh, that's what I heard that public safety, especially police, have a million dollars over time. I don't think we spent a million dollars on that day. So, how much was it? I, I don't know. It definitely wasn't a million. I don't know. I don't know. Can't Can you find that for us? Yeah. Because uh, just, just from 4th of July? Yeah, 4th of July. 4th of July. They purchased so many police shops in that area. So uh, some of that, some of that comes from uh, federal grants. Uh, it's, it's a big event for Jersey City. There's a big homeland security risk, mm -hmm. so we fund a lot of that through Greg Pearson and that sort of thing. So we don't actually end up paying every single dollar. I said, just want to know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, those kind of events, homeland security grant, how much they cover, how much mm -hmm. you bring up the overtime, yeah, sure, sure, sure. cost of taxpayers. Sure. There's sure. no way a million dollars. So, yeah, no way. But that's so, what I heard. Uh, I don't recall from the last meeting, but if you can give me um, information about uh, building and street maintenance salaries, sanitation salaries, and park maintenance salaries um, as to what the uh, increase is there. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm fairly certain it's, yeah, okay. I think they were discussed at the last one. Yeah. How much did they pay Snoopy? They paid him 100 grand. Under 
Okay, keep, let's keep going moving. B is the yeah. authorizing the insertion of special items. There but there are grants. C is the requesting change in title, text, or amount of appropriation. D, I forgot to have this circulating around the table. Please uh, sign your name to that four times. Uh, it's a certification that you received the budget, uh, the audit, I should say, of our books, accounts, and financial statements. E is a creating a okay, community President. advisory board. Council President? Yes. I think we should hold some special meeting to discuss about the, the, uh, our municipal government audit. There are a lot of you know, concern and issue. We should be addressed there. You know? I mean, we can have a meeting. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Certain Sorry. people want to attend. Yeah. So then, you know what? In some respect, let me speak with you. We'll, we'll talk. Yeah, in, yeah. The, the audit typically, uh, well, for every year, there's, there's, there's corrective actions that we take, yeah. and so we probably should talk after we take some other okay, actions. Okay, I'm just like, like a, Yeah, okay, okay. Outside of the meeting. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Easier for you. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Creating a community advisory board for the Open Space Fund. So, so Council President? Then each council member actually recommend one person from the their district. I don't think so. What did say? No, these are these are community um, members from yes, the yes. that are appointed by the mayor. But well, appointed by the mayor, but we can have a member of the municipal council appointed by the municipal board of the municipal council. Correct. Correct. So each council member can recommend no, no, no. one. Can you sign up for yeah. it? Yeah. What's that? From the tour. Yeah, it's more. Michael, what's that? Yeah, that's there. There is a member of the city council, and the member of the city council is appointed by their council peers. So eleven members. So one from the mayor's designated or he or planning of division, president of Jersey Park Commission. So three, and uh, a member of the municipal council, which is a six. So nine, and the E represent the department works ten. F resident from each six words. So now one resident from the each six words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can have the no here. What is it you want to point though? He wants to know do you appoint? Do you yes. appoint? So many no, the, the, the six members are appointed um, by the mayor with the advice and consent of the municipal council. Yeah. So now count. Mayor is one, plan division one, president of park one. Member of the municipal council is one, and the uh, uh, department of public is one, five, and the one is just six. Six. Yeah, six, six, six. six. So yeah. eleven. So each resident from the each six word should be appointed by each council members. Danny, yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. You have to you have to articulate that. So, so now it's six member. You're asking that it be changed. From no, no, a mayoral no. appointee yeah. to a council appointee. ward appointee. Yeah, each ward council should be appointed to one. Pass them down to the DA. You have to run that by the law department. So, yeah. sure. so is this a, yeah. again, it's asking us, but is this a, like, a, is this a board required by, like, state statute? No, no, no. No, no, no. It's purely advisory. Yes, yeah. yeah. so you, 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 you can do whatever you want to. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. So I one reason for the case. Yeah, yeah, I agree with Councilman Yoon. I mean, mm -hmm. the entire, I mean, the, the, the mayor gets incredible That's power to make appointments, and this is Parks, which is a huge council issue. Uh, so sort of we should be having each council to share yeah. recommend one. And the advice and consent of the entire council. Yeah. 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 So yeah. the council at large yeah. at least have some say on how that looks. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You've worked at the time of the other options. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to run by legal. We've had on this on the other advisory committees that have been created. Um, so that's where that language came, came from. from. I certainly we can talk about it. Um, the idea behind this um, Open Space Trustman Advisory Committee is that there's been concern, specifically expressed by the Parks Coalition and their members, that they want to have um, some sort of you know input and recommendation as to how the tax money that's collected on the Open Space Trust Fund is spent. Mm -hmm. So you don't have situations where all capital dollars or all money is going into one part. Yeah. They'll, they'll use the example of Barry Lane. Mm -hmm. um, and so this way, this there's um, 
And the idea behind this is to create a structure where um, if recommendations come in on different um, projects, the advisory committee would review them and then give their, you know, give their recommendations to so, council. So, Councilman, just so I'm not sure where you're at, you, you're asking that these six individual ward members be essentially nominated by the council person from that ward? Yes. Okay. Would you advise we got to make sure that, that you know, we got to make what? sure that. So, wait, not, wait, each council person gets to nominate their own or? Right. No, the, the whole council, right. Okay. No, the whole, right. That's each I mean. one. But they have to be voted on. But voted the, on by the council. But they have to be voted on through the council. You can nominate, but it should be voted on. Yes, so. I think that's fair. Right. Yeah. So, so essentially a nomination is approval of that. Right. Yes. Yeah. So each council person nominated one from their own group. And they each voted, they voted the council. Yeah, they voted. That's what I'm saying. She goes appointed by the mayor with the other vice consists of the council. Well, you get your own we'll vote around. when we come in. Look. So okay. don't even go don't even go that far. <laughs> It's just an advisory. So don't yeah. go that far. I'm telling you. Okay. So we you still, whatever happens with that money, they have to come back in. We have to vote. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not that. Oh, we'll talk about it. Talk about yeah. it. All right. Let's move. You know? Just want to make sure that each account where members have a right to right. recommend right. the uh, uh, appoints. Not open the. She's going to do that. Yeah. She's going to make that change. So is this going to be on the agenda? What is this? What is this? Well, you sign your name. Amendment, so you sign your name four up. times. Oh, no, we'll talk about whether or not we need to make the amendment, and then. Okay. We'll okay. Did anyone? Did anyone from all the department offices? Or? Yeah, I worked with. Um, John. I worked with um, oh, Nick, and I worked with Ann. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, question about. I'll speak um, to that tomorrow. Okay. About section yeah. three and four. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. done that way in the group so that there can be staggered appointments, right? Correct. So okay. that way, it, it will. Um, We'll have to come back to um, it's put together for a period of four years, um, and then after the four years is expired, they will come back to see if it will be recommended to start again. But the idea for the staggered terms is to um, have some institutional knowledge so the advisory committee it's not just stop and start all at the same time. So that's why we have the, um, the one year term, the two year term, and then the second term is two years. But that still allows for that one group to go back to the one year again. Mm -hmm. So that way there's some um, consistency that see. way as well. So if um, you know, they decide after two years to renew it, but then they have to you know, go through the process of appointing a whole new board, this way there's still some consistency. You know what so, I So the one, if I could just, I, I don't want this, is, I like this, mm -hmm. this resolution. So, if they're making the change about the council award, the council person appointing, just to be mindful of the idea that um, you know, within the parks coalition itself, there's like a politics, right? From, right. Like inside well, the parks. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So like, it is. You want to avoid the um, somebody else maybe appointing. I don't know. Just, just putting it out right. there. Okay. Appointing okay. someone who Does might be anti-parks coalition or 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 within the parks coalition, causing divisiveness, things like that. I'm not sure how you want to like do that, but like. Um, yeah. <laughs> Coalition was the one that brought the base adjustment tax to the administration and got that moving. So um, I don't. It raises a good point because mm -hmm. as a member of the Parks Coalition, mm -hmm. I've seen mm -hmm. some crazy stuff happen. Uh, but that that's sort of the idea also behind the the ward appointments. Also, is so there's some balance there as well because also in some wards, some wards have more parks than others. Some wards have more open space than others. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to just make sure that everyone is included in the process. So that was the idea behind that. Because the other thought we had, and maybe if this it makes more sense for people, is to do four community people, but done by district. So it would be north, south, east, west. Mm -hmm. But then that that again can create some of the same problem. So it's either way, it's it's going to be that I think we may maybe a little bit more. So, but that's if you have if you have a suggestion around that, yeah. let me know. I'm glad to hear it, but. Um, but I, I, that's one of the reasons why we figured two would also be better to have six as opposed to four because then it would also, if there is that mm -hmm. internal tension, it would balance that out. So, Mira? Yes, Michael. Just make sure that the membership, you know, the F, one resident from the each of the six world of Jersey City, mm -hmm. and then the resident actually 
recommended by each world council person, you know what I'm saying? We're going to make sure that, okay? I will talk with um, Peter about that tomorrow when he consults with Nick and Hannah. Yes. And then we'll move forward one way or another. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Consult with Nick and Hannah from the legal department. That's why I worked on with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Cool.